All right. This is my 1971 Datsun 240Z, my pride and joy. I've had this car for about nine years now. I figured I'd just make a little video before I put it away for winter just to share it with some people. So, it's mostly stock on the exterior here, just a couple little flourishes and touches here and there. So I've got a fiberglass front air dam on there. This helps a little with the downforce at high speed. I have louvers for the inspection lids. Just picked them up off a guy on eBay and uh, just a nice little detail there and lets a little more heat out from under the hood. Uh, big thing you're probably seeing right at this angle is the wheels. A uh, little bit of an extravagance there, but uh, I love the car, so I went a little wild and spent more money than I should have and bought the Volk Racing T37Bs. They're forged aluminum, weigh 11 pounds each, and they are just, just beautiful, beautiful wheels. And for rubber, I'm running the Toyo R888Rs, 100 tread wear. They're uh, DOT track tires, so they're street legal, but they're, uh, they're epic in dry weather, just infinite amounts of grip, but they're absolutely terrifying in wet weather. Uh, I got caught in a thunder shower once driving home from uh, Ottawa up north of here, and I had to pull over, just, there was just no grip whatsoever. So it's a trade-off there, but it's a classic car. You generally don't really drive these in the wet weather, so I figured it was worth it. Hey, cheers, man. Yeah, people love their Datsuns. So I'm a little crazy here with the exhaust. I always love the uh, dual vertical stack look on the 240 ZG, the old race version of this car in Japan. And at the time, there was nothing available in the North American market for that. Now there's a couple different options, but uh, I just made do with what I could figure out at the time and went for a Magnaflow 3 inch in, dual out exhaust and had it turned on its side and welded some uh, tips on there. Slashes just uh, vertically staggered a little bit. And I, think it I think it pulls off the look well. I think it's sharp and it kicks out a great sound. So I got a duckbill spoiler on there. That just helps a little bit with the exhaust fumes and everything else when you're driving. Stops them going back towards the cabin and a little extra downforce at high speed. So this being a December 1970 build, it is what they consider a Series 1. And you can always tell a Series 1 by two details. You have this really, really smart 240Z badge on the C pillar here, whereas the later ones will just have a round Z. And I also have the vents here on the rear hatch. Other thing you can notice usually, is the vertical lines for the defroster there. So the car's actually December 1970 build date, so uh, we're in November 2020 right now. It turns 50 next month. Kind of exciting. It'll be in storage for winter by then, though. So yeah, that's the exterior. Let's take a look inside. So we're mostly stock in here. The, the big changes are the gauges, which are autometer ultralights. Then I've got a Momo competition steering wheel and a short shifter. That's uh, from Motorsport Auto. It just helps with the shifting. Normally there's a big old shifter in there with a huge sway in between each gear. That just brings things a little lower and a little tighter. Makes a real satisfying clunk in between gears too. Big fan. Let's just turn on the gauge lights here. I just love the effect of those when they light up. Uh, the bright orange needles on the gauges, the uh, lighting around the edges. It's, it's old school and I think it works. As far as seats go, we're stock. They're, uh, I find them comfortable enough. They're not good at the track. You slide around and everything, but uh, the rest of the time they're comfortable for long drives. The little vents help that little bit. Uh, I, I just think they look cool. So that's the interior there. Let's see what's under the hood. No engine swaps here. I'm kicking it old school. We've got the L28. So that's a 2.8 liter straight six. Uh, stock of the 240Z, you'd have a 2.4 liter. So this is actually a 280Z block. Just a little more uh, displacement there, a little more horsepower. Um, I'm running flat top pistons in there, 
So the compression bumps up from around eight to one to 10 to one. 10 to one's about as high as you can go running um, premium gas at the gas pumps here. Anything higher than that, you're looking at all sorts of detonation happening and nothing good's gonna come of that. So for uh, carbs, as you can see, triple Makuni 44s. Uh, just beautiful carbs. I've uh, had a lot of fun working on them over the years. I just rebuild them as a hobby now. And they look the part, they make the right sounds. It makes the power. Yeah, ITBs would probably make a little more power, but eh, I like things to be at least somewhat period correct then. I, I just think they look cool, man. So probably can't see it there, but there is a header down there. It's a six into one that runs into a three inch mandrel bent exhaust. Then I've got a 18 inch vibrant resonator in the transmission tunnel, and then the MagnaFlow dual stack at the rear, both perforated core. So they're not hurting flow too much, but they do keep the sound down just enough. So I'm not bothering anyone too much. And it, it does make pretty nice music. I'll start the car up in a little bit. Got my oil vapor catch can down there. Just keeps things a little tighter under the hood. Uh, <laughs> my uh, incredibly fancy water bottle there just to catch the radiator overflow. Got a Griffin, three, three row aluminum radiator there. Big old rad, just never had any issues whatsoever with uh, overheating. No fan on this side. On this side I've got the dual electric fans with the Durali controller over there just above the system one fuel filter. Then in the corner there, that's just a Holley uh, full fuel pressure regulator. So these carbs generally like around four PSI and that's what I've got it set to. No distributor. Uh, I'm just not a fan of those things. So uh, I've got a Electromotive XDI electronic ignition, which mounts a 60 minus two trigger wheel on the front of the crank down there and a magnetic sensor, which goes to a little box in the glove compartment, which lets me set the timing curve at 1,000, 3,000, and 8,000 RPM. And I can also set a uh, soft rev limiter, which I've got set at about 7,000 RPM. So it'll zero the timing there and just stop the RPMs going any higher, which will save me from blowing up the engine if I'm being a little careless. And then we've got the uh, coil packs over here. Lovely system, no spark scatter, no headaches, just rock solid timing all the way, no matter what the RPM is. Highly recommended, not cheap, but you know, the best things never are, so. And I'm running a JDM valve cover there. Had a local guy just uh, do the red wrinkle powder coat on there. Nice little bit of pop under the hood. I think it looks sharp. Yeah, so there we go. Then uh, just running the Cusco strut brace here. Techno toy tuning, triangulation to the firewall. I'm not really sure how much that does, but I figured why not? It was cheap. It was like a hundred bucks or something like that. So throw it on if it helps a little bit, great. If not, at least it looks cool, right? As far as suspension goes, uh, I don't think I mentioned that. So uh, the car is lowered about two inches. It's running uh, Motorsport Auto springs. Um, I think they're blue springs they were called. They don't make them anymore, but they lower the car about two inches and they're about 50% stiffer than stock. So a little bit better for handling. And uh, just that meaner stance there. Stock control arms, but I am running uh, upgraded front and rear sway bars. I do have a roll bar in the back there as well. And I am running rear disc brakes. 280ZX conversion and uh, the Toyota 4x4 dual piston or dual uh, yeah dual piston calipers on the front with uh, cross drilled and slotted discs. It does the job at the track. I have no problem locking up the brakes. Let's start the car up. Got my uh, wide band down there. Just does a little countdown warming up the sensor. Yeah, vehicle's already warmed up. It's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, the alternator belt squeals. I know. I'll adjust that one of these days. Yeah, she makes. 
makes a pretty good sound. Cheers guys, take care.